Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Golden Blooded is a college football YouTube channel for entertainment. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into our next college football video. Don't forget to send gear to represent your team. The address is P.O. Box 360, Liberty South Carolina 29657. Yes. Shout out to the winners of our bowl prediction contest. We had a three-way tie for third place. In third place, we had Alan Aaron, we had Matthew Skidmore, and we had Charlie Wood. And for second place, we also had a two-way tie, so there will be two people that will get a signed Golden Blooded flat bill hat. First one is LSU number one 2019 DJB. And the second one is Jason Rollinson. But of course, the first place spot and winner of $50, firefighter1218 at gmail.com. I don't know if y'all realize this or not, but it can get really, really challenging making college football content whenever the college football season is actually over. Because the problem is, people who are fans of college football tend to lose interest once the national championship is over up until around, I don't know, mid-May, late May, something like that. So it does get challenging in the months of February, March, April, and parts of May. So what I do is I kind of transition into, yes, I still keep my eyes out for breaking news and something interesting to talk about. But at the same time, I also keep my eyes on the comments section here at Golden Blue Dude. You guys have interesting video ideas. I, I gotta hand it to you. So what I'm doing is I'm looking through the comments trying to figure out, hmm, does that interest me? Maybe, maybe not. And something really pops out. And this comment right here really popped out to me. This was a comment made on yesterday's video about Virginia Tech possibly going to the Big Ten once they get AAU status. This, of course, is from a West Virginia fan. Mountaineer News 2 says this. You know what the Big Ten is doing is that they're admitting teams in phases. So they're gonna admit U.S and UCLA first, and then Oregon and Washington. Okay, that's interesting, but this last part is what really caught my eyes. And another thing is, Virginia Tech is probably too dumb for the big team. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Why did he say that? I'm glad you asked. It's because of this. Because they signed a 10-year contract to play Old Dominion. Okay. Over West Virginia. Okay. West Virginia offered a 10-year contract, and so did Old Dominion. And guess what? Virginia Tech chose Old Dominion, so yep. That, that is crazy. I did not know that. Looking it up, yes, that is a fact. What are you thinking, Virginia Tech? And on top of that, I, I guess Virginia Tech thought that they would be gimme wins. No, they've lost to Old Dominion multiple, multiple times. Losing to Old Dominion once is bad. Losing to them multiple times, that's inexcusable. That shouldn't happen. I don't care if it's on the road. I think their stadium holds like 25,000, 30,000. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's a tough atmosphere. Come on, Virginia Tech. So let's look back at Virginia Tech's schedule and, and try to figure this one out. Now, West Virginia does lead the all-time series between them and Virginia Tech. 30 wins to 23 losses and one tie. This is the Black Diamond Trophy. And West Virginia does have possession of the Black Diamond Trophy right now. Why? Because the recent meetings in 2021, West Virginia won in Morgantown 27-21. I was there to watch that fourth and goal stand in the waning seconds of the fourth quarter. Great game. Stressed me out. But West Virginia came off with a win. 2022, West Virginia won in Blacksburg. 33-10 to 10 to retain the Black Diamond Trophy for the foreseeable future. So that's what you get for not scheduling West Virginia to an extended contract. We win the trophy, and now we get to keep it for a while. All right, let's look at their schedule. Heading back to 2017, I didn't want to look too far back. That could get a little boring. But in 2017, Virginia Tech beat Old Dominion in Blacksburg 38 to nothing. So it was actually off to a good start. And on top of that, they beat West Virginia in Andover, Maryland 31-24. That was a good year for Virginia Tech, and they finished 9-4. Yeah, it's a decent record, so a good year for Virginia Tech in 2017. In 2018, Virginia Tech lost at Old Dominion 49-35. I remember watching that game. That was a crazy, crazy game. And Virginia Tech finished 6-7, and seven, so not a good year for Virginia Tech. 2019, Virginia Tech won in Blacksburg 31-17, and they finished 8-5. Decent year for Virginia Tech. In 2020, they did not play because it was a COVID year. Virginia Tech finished 5-6. 2021, once again, they didn't play Old Dominion, but they did play West Virginia in Morgantown and lost 27-21. I just talked about that. Virginia Tech finished 6-7 in 2022. Virginia Tech, once again, lost at Old Dominion 2017 
And on top of that, lost to West Virginia in Blacksburg, 33 to 10, got blown out, and they finished three and eight. Looking forward, what does their schedule look like? It doesn't make sense, people. Talking about their out of conference. These are all the opportunities that they could have scheduled West Virginia in their out of conference. But no, here's what their out of conference looks like as it relates to Old Dominion and teams that are actually close to West Virginia, but not West Virginia. In 2023, Virginia Tech will play Old Dominion in Blacksburg, and then they'll go on the road to play Marshall. Huh? What? So you don't want to play West Virginia, but you'll take a road trip to Marshall. Uh, I don't understand it. I really, really don't. 2024. They will play Old Dominion in Norfolk, which is where Old Dominion is. And then they'll play Marshall at home. So once again, an opportunity to play West Virginia? No, we're going to give it to Marshall. Okay. 2025, they're going to play Old Dominion in Blacksburg. And then they're going to play James Madison in Blacksburg, which James Madison is a Virginia school. 2026, Old Dominion in Blacksburg again. And then at Maryland. Maryland over West Virginia. And I know that's probably a sort of a rivalry. I don't know. But West Virginia and Virginia Tech, much, much better rivalry. 2027, Old Dominion in Norfolk. And then Maryland at home. And then Liberty at home. 2028, Old Dominion in Blacksburg. At Maryland. And then Liberty in Blacksburg. 2029, Old Dominion in Norfolk. Maryland at home. Liberty at home. And then 2030, Old Dominion in Blacksburg. And then at Liberty. So, oh my gosh, not just a stretch to where they have a chance to schedule West Virginia, but they avoid West Virginia and schedule Marshall, James Madison, Maryland, Liberty. But on top of that, longer stretches against Maryland. 2026 to 2029, they have a four-game series against Maryland, at Maryland, Maryland at home, at Maryland, Maryland at home. And then between 2027 to 2030, they have a four-game stretch with Liberty. But this is a 3-1 series, so they get three home games against Liberty, and then they go on the road to play Liberty. What in the world is Virginia Tech thinking? Do they like losing money? I mean, this rivalry against West Virginia brings in a ton of money, both for West Virginia and Virginia Tech. The fans love it. The nation loves it. But instead, you choose to play Old Dominion for a freaking decade. Not even a four-game set for Old Dominion. A freaking decade. Decade! And I understand Virginia is a commonwealth, so everybody's going to make money, but you would make more money, more out-of-state money coming into the state of Virginia with the Black Diamond Trophy rivalry. It, ju it, it baffles me. It really does. So you have a 10-game swing, a 10-game series against Old Dominion, and among that 10-game series, you also have a 4-game series against Maryland, and then a 4-game series against Liberty, not to mention you can play Marshall twice and James Madison once. Missed, missed opportunities for Virginia Tech, and I don't understand it at all. Maybe they thought scheduling Old Dominion was going to pad their schedule and give them extra wins. Maybe they think that with Marshall and James Madison and Maryland and Liberty. I don't think so. I mean, you've already lost twice to Old Dominion in the past four tries. So you won two, and you lost two. Lost both on the road, won both at home. So, yeah, that, that didn't work. That backfired tremendously. So, the rest of the schedule might backfire as well. You know what? Mountaineer News 2 might be right. Virginia Tech, as far as the officials, I'm not really talking about Virginia Tech fans. Remember, try to separate this in your mind. The officials that make the decisions and the fans, two separate entities. I love trash-talking Virginia Tech fans because they are a rivalry, but this is not about them. This is about the officials that make the decisions for Virginia Tech. And I'm telling you, they're not very smart. They're not making as much money, as much money as they could by scheduling these out-of-conference games. And I know they get to play their rival Virginia every year because they're both in the ACC. But you're out of conference. You have a massive, massive opportunity to make money. And you're flushing it down the toilet. Mountaineers News 2 might be right. Virginia Tech officials might be too dumb for the Big Ten. Or maybe they're just dumb enough to where the Big Ten could actually take advantage of them. Either or. So you'll have to know in the comment section. Number one, did you realize that Virginia Tech turned down a 10-game contract, a 10-year contract with West Virginia in favor of Old Dominion? Number two, did you realize that Virginia Tech has already lost two meetings against Old Dominion since they started playing them? Number three, do you think Virginia Tech missed a massive opportunity to make some revenue off the Black Diamond Trophy rivalry? Number four, I gotta ask it, I gotta ask it, do you think Virginia Tech is too dumb for the Big Ten? <laughs> That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.